Hello! So, this is the book I want to look at today, The Feynman Lectures on Computation by Richard Feynman. This is a book that really connected, for me, the physics and the engineering of computers, of how computers actually work. That's what this is about. So, I'd seen books that are really good on the physics of semiconductors and even things up to a transistor. And I'd seen things that were... Um, very good at taking, very good at computer architecture, right? I've seen some very good books on either of those, but actually something that made me feel like I understood the connection between the two uh, was not really forthcoming. I did not find that until I picked this up. Now, the nice thing about it is because it's by Richard Feynman, it's widely available. It's been available for a long time, and it's probably available at your local bookstore or something like that. I probably bought it at a bookstore or something at some point. And I was a little bit reticent to buy this book. I'd seen it sitting around in Barnes and Nobles and Borders for years. But, you know, Feynman, despite his reputation, reading his books really hasn't, for me, been very illuminating. I get very, very little out of them. Um, so, for example, you know, these advanced book classics, there's quantum electrodynamics, there's statistical mechanics, a set of lectures. These are just sets of lectures, just like these. And there's another one on fundamental processes that's at work, pro probably along with the Feynman lectures on physics. Um, the Feynman lectures on gravitation is over by my bed stand. I don't want to go across the house to get that. So... These other books, like this, I, although uh, interesting, are extremely difficult, right? These are very, very difficult books that I found very hard to um, keep track of. Uh, the Feynman Lectures on Physics are very famous for being an extremely clear explanation of basic physics after you already understand it. Um, those, that particular project, Feynman said, was a, um, was a failure. He said that those classes at Caltech in the 1960s were a failure, despite the fact that he became very famous for those lectures. Those lectures are very clear, concise, logical. They give all sorts of really interesting examples. They're really good lectures. Uh, but some of these, uh, books, they don't feel quite that nice. It's a little more difficult sometimes with some of these books. So I was a little bit worried about picking this up because I haven't had as good a experience with most of the things that Feynman wrote. There are a few things, a few things that Feynman wrote that I thought were really, really good. And some of those lectures I thought were phenomenal in the um, Feynman lectures on physics. In fact, I listen to them in my car repeatedly over and over. But this, this was a little worrying, but, you know, at one point I decided to take a peek. And if you look at it, it's much more user-friendly, right? It's much more user-friendly than these other books. Um, rather than, I mean, it's still physics, still plenty of interesting things going on, but it did not look like that. Table 20, uh, tack 1, you know, beautiful, beautiful mathematics. It takes forever to figure out if you're all by yourself. Um, so I did decide to pick it up, and I was surprised. I thought it was amazing, and I think you would be too if you um, read it. So like I said, there are lots of things that are good with semiconductors, don't have the uh, reach to grab a book on that right now. However, you know, this book really does start you out um, trying to figure out what's going on with a computer and how the computer actually works. And you'll notice that if you've done any stuff, anything with um, 
quantum computation. It goes actually in sort of the same order if you pick up one of the really good quantum comp computation books. So this is a very good um, book, I think, if you'd like to learn these things. So first he just gives an introduction to computers. Remember this is I, I don't I don't actually know when was this originally um this was really in the 1990s when he did this so well, 1987 so this was still pretty early on I mean I had a computer I was sitting around programming a computer that my dad had bought for work at this point but because, you know, I was a precocious 10-year-old. But still, these are, computers were still sort of a novelty at that point. So basically, you see that he's going through his file clerk model. Basically, you're sitting here filing information, right? And then here's a set of instructions and stuff like that. So it's basically just talking about what a computer does when you use it. And he starts out. Then he starts talking about how the different... Um, parts of a computer work, you know, initially, right? Gates and combinatorial logic, basic sort of logic s skills, the binary decoder, uh, very important gates, uh, reversible gates, complete sets of operators. It's important to know that you have that flip-flops and computer memory. Uh, important to get around without it. So uh, here we have the logic gates, black box adder. These are fairly important, but, you know, it's when you get into here, when you get into something like this where you have, this would be a FET, and this would be a device under test or resistor, let's say, and this is what your NAND gate looks like. This is how you build a NAND gate, if you understand it, so you just need a, a um, well, it's not necessarily a FET. Probably these were, I, mean, I don't remember exactly what these were. Well, they were FETs. This was before MOSFETs, I think. No, it says a MOS environment. So this is a FET, this is a FET, this is a resistor, and you know this is your output. And depending on A and B, you get a different voltage. And if you get the voltage you need, you get true, right? And same thing over here, there's a NOR. This is what a NOR looks like. This is just you know a circuit diagram for these things. Fairly simple and straightforward. And you know, you just draw that as one of these previous symbols here, right? So this is this is an OR, and this is an AND, and a couple of knots coming out, right? So some truth tables, sort of fun things like that. And you see, if you look at something like this with these wires and these connections, the little dots are connections, this is what um, sort of wiring looks like for a more complicated system, right? You get, you know, three-bit output rather than a single bit output. So this is just a single bit output here. These are three bit outputs. Each one of these is one of these things, sort of. Right. And then you start to figure out different sorts of things for what you need for different sorts of operations. Um, timing and shift registers, things like that, very important. You need some sort of clock in your computer, right? So that your computer is always operating, everything's operating at the same time. Um, that becomes very important for when you're trying to build more, uh, how should I say, more advanced applications. It's actually a really interesting um, problem in trying to trying to build something without a clock. If you build something without a clock, maybe you can build. If you can build a computer without a clock, maybe you can build a, a universe. Maybe I'm not sure. That's what I was thinking, you know, the past couple of weeks. Right, and then you get into co computation itself. So this is how the computer works. And now you're saying, how does computation work? And you get all sorts of things, you basically build up these finite state machines. Very important, so you have different states and you keep the state and you understand what the state means. You get more data and you change the state, right? That's basically how it works. A Turing machine, which is just a universal um, computer, and there's a halting problem, obviously, 
you can't decide when something's going to going to halt with a Turing machine. Um, so you basically can't use your computer to figure out when your process is going to end because it would take a it would take a program that could take not necessarily will but could take as long as the process to figure out when the process will end. Makes it sort of an issue, right? Um, that's where your computer fails all the time, or not all the time, hopefully, but when your computer fails a lot of times, that's that's a problem. If the halting problem weren't a problem, they'd be able to work around, you know, you know, the blue screen of death. Although I don't think you get that very often anymore. Computability, a very important idea. You know, can you actually compute it? Um, can you do better than just checking all the answers? <laughs> That's what computability really talks about. Coding and information theory. Um, and here we're getting into well, information theory, yeah. So we're getting into information theory, and we'll get into things like, if we're getting into Shannon's theorem, then we'll get into things like um, well, information as bits and then entropy and things like that. So it's very, very strange. Um, data compression information and so forth. Um, additional techniques and all sorts of things like that. Very important. Um, reversal computation in the thermodynamics of computing, right? So I should have reread this. I would think that you can't have completely reversible computing um, when you're dealing with the physics of information and you're dealing with entropy and stuff like that. Um, but it, apparently here you can have a reversible computer. And then you have the billiard ball computer, which I'd love to look up again because it's been a while since I read this. So I read this probably before, I would guess I read this sometime between 2008 and 2013. So it's been several years. And that particular example, I don't recall. And now I really, really want to look at it. Um, and here's the beginnings of quantum computing, right? some ideas about what's going to happen with a quantum computer from 1985, from Optics News in 1985. And, okay, here we go. The physical aspects of computation, the caveat from the editors. Actually, when they published this in 1996, the technology that Feynman was talking about here was already obsolete. So they're talking about some of the changes since then. So. That's an overview of this book. I thought it was really great. Again, you know, you're not dealing with much of anything horrible. I mean, you do have to figure out combinations and stuff like that. Let's, we're in our thermo thermodynamics, so we should be able to find uh, entropy things somewhere. I'm not, ooh, transitions. Awesome, this is beautiful, right? Look, at the, this is beautiful. Everybody should have to deal with something like this. I wish I could figure out how to put that into my physics one class. I mean, this this is really what energy is for, is figuring out stuff like this. Um, sitting around and playing with loop-the-loops, uh, loop playing with um, roller coasters is fun. It's fun to play with roller coasters, but it's nowhere near as much fun as a potential barrier, you know, randomly popping over a potential barrier. Oh, there's our billiard ball computer. So I overdid it. Um, a or B or yeah, these are all ands. A and B, A, B and not A, not B and A and A and B. So we have our different states coming out. Very interesting. It's very interesting. See how this is working. Um, so. Energy. The amount of information is this thing. So you can see the information is the entropy again, um, which you probably talked about previously. We should talk about Shannon at some point more. Oh, okay. So I will stop on that because I'm going to end up, you know, just talking indefinitely, or I'm going to end up wandering through this and trying to look at things and say, oh, I remember that. That's so 
amazing right there's Shannon Snoon look at her information it's, it's it's just beautiful it's just beautiful so this is a book I highly recommend Feynman lectures on computation who's publishing it these days um, Westview Press advanced books program that's what I've got here don't see exactly when I it doesn't matter exactly when the, my edition came out uh, but like I said you know even though it has Feynman on it, and even though a lot of his stuff is less accessible than you think it's going to be because, you know, of Feynman's um, reputation, I found this to be a great accessible book that explains the connection between the physics and the technology and computers, unlike a lot of books that I've seen. Right? So I think this is a really good book. I think if you haven't read it, you're going to love it. All right. Thank you. Bye now.